Okay, so as everyone knows, of course, Virgil Abloh unfortunately passed. And a lot of people have asked me, like, my thoughts on kind of the situation. And to be very honest, I needed a few days just to process what happened. I talked to a few friends um, about, like, what Virgil meant to me. But I don't think I've, like, publicly said... Uh, what Virgil Abloh represented to me. So that's really what I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, and I think Virgil Abloh is sort of embedded in my whole fashion journey from the start, essentially, um, because I followed Virgil Abloh all the way from Tumblr days, all the Pyrex visions and bin trill. And yeah, so I think it's best for me to just explain sort of my journey in fashion to then tell you why Virgil meant so much to me personally and he's such a big part of my journey in fashion. So I've spoken about the story how I got my first internship but the thing about when I got my first fashion internship with Deploy London was that when I was working there there was still this sense of you know fashion is fun but it's not something I can make a job because there aren't many people who are black who are in like big positions. And so as a black person, yes, it might be fun, but I'm not really going to get anywhere. And that's the reason why even around the time I did my first internship, I still went to university and studied chemical engineering, even though I knew that my passion was in fashion. I preferred fashion to anything else. Um, and so, of course, I then continued doing many jobs in which I was always the only black person and most times I was in the lowest position in the whole um, room, most of the time, um, in the whole company, whatever. And going back to my first internship, my first internship was sort of, I did everything and that was when I still thought I wanted to be a designer but I think as time passed I realised that, not that I don't have the skills to be a designer because I think you can learn how to pattern make and how to sew, but I just don't think that's my calling. I don't think I have the natural, the natural, there's, I feel like the really, really best designers, the people like McQueen's, those type of people, there's this natural ability they have that I didn't personally think I had. And so I realized, what do I like to do? What, you know, do I enjoy? And I realized that reading about fashion was something that I really found fun. And I was like, what is that in a job form? And I realised that is what fashion journalism is. You read about fashion, you write about fashion, you learn about fashion, you share the information. And that was when, after my first internship, I realised I wanted to be um, a journalist. And of course, I didn't know what my way in would be. I had worked other fashion jobs after in marketing, in product testing, not really journalism. And the whole time, I just... Even though I, I kind of knew that I wanted to be a fashion journalist, I just thought, yeah, it's it's cool. Like, I do want to be a fashion journalist, but it's really unrealistic. Like, this is not something that's actually going to happen because I'm sure many people know, at the time, a picture came out of British Vogue and when Alexandra Shulman was um, editor-in-chief of British Vogue. And, yeah, the whole editorial staff was white. And... I'm not going into the whole racism thing. I'm not saying that all those white people weren't the best for the job. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. I'm just saying personally, as a black person, when you don't see anyone that looks like you in a position, you just think, yeah, but <laughs> it's not gonna happen. And Virgil Abloh, throughout when I was having these thoughts, when I was really struggling with, if it was realistic to think I could just enter the fashion industry as a black guy who, I don't even sound posh, like I'm from, I grew up in London and half of my life I grew up in Nigeria. Like I, my accent is half African, half London commoner. I don't sound like, yes, hello there. I don't sound like some Chelsea posh white kid. Like, I don't sound like that. And I felt like a lot of um, journalists that were famous, they sort of sounded like that. They looked like that. That was how a lot of people were upper class in the places that I worked. I just thought there was no space for me. And Virgil Abloh the whole time was someone that, despite his upbringing, him being black, he would get into the biggest positions, whether what he was doing with Off-White or how he, you know, when no one could really make it as a designer unless you went to, like, the fashion school or you knew the people. 
And Virgil Abloh was like one of the first people to make a big, big, big stride doing it his own way, doing it very independently. And at that time when I decided, okay, I want to be a journalist, that was why I actually started my YouTube channel. A big reason was because of Virgil Abloh, because Virgil Abloh, and a lot of people say this thing about Virgil Abloh, where he gives you this ability that if I can do it, you can do it too. And I genuinely felt that way. I felt like, why can't I be a fashion journalist if this black guy is literally about to become the creator, the creative director, sorry, the artistic director um, of menswear for Louis Vuitton. So I made my YouTube channel, started sharing, um, obviously content, um, started sharing my ideas, sharing different information about different fashion brands that I was intrigued by. And it sort of picked up, uh, which was crazy. And then now I'm kind of doing what I thought wasn't possible, which is I'm actually a fashion journalist and I write for big publications and I, stu I study fashion journalism at Central St. Martins, which is a whole nother thing. And so I think for me, Virgil Abloh just almost motivated me throughout my career. He really, really motivated me. There were times when I thought that trying to be a journalist, you're like, you're really wasting your time. Just be an engineer and call it quits. Like, just focus on what you're doing now. Like, take it, take the safe route because whatever you, this whole la la land dream that you have is not a realistic possibility. And it's just crazy how people you don't even know can motivate you like that because I did get to know Virgil Abloh later on um, but the early stages when I was really trying to become a fashion journalist, it was not, um, yeah, I did not know him. I'd never spoken to him. Um, I'm quite happy I did get to speak to him a few times before he passed because he was someone that meant a lot to me. And even outside of that, it's also the way he, he works, like his artistic ideas. A lot of people talk about Duchamp when they talk about Virgil Abloh's work because Duchamp was an artist that sort of believed that you could take the same work of art and transform that work of art and put it in a different setting or a different time frame. And that is what inherently changes the meaning of what that art piece is. Even if, even if aesthetically, you're looking at these two pieces of artwork and you're like, these look very similar, they look the same. Duchamp believed that the context can be changed very significantly depending on how you, how you present it, or what you change about it. And I know Virgil Abloh has been criticized saying that you can change 3% of an object and make it new. But there were many different collections where Virgil Abloh was asking very genuine questions about fashion. The whole thing about um, nothing in fashion is new. The whole thing about everyone copies everyone. I mean, I've talked about this before, but couturiers used to copy each other and they used to take permission to copy each other study each other's patterns. They used to even sell copied garments and it would take them years before they finally realize what their own personal style or personal aesthetic is. It's crazy, like people like Ralph Lauren, literally his whole brand was built on things like military jackets that he just changed slightly season to season until it evolved to something that was distinctly Ralph Lauren. I think a lot of designers do that. There's so many designers that people think are original, like Rick Owens, for example. Um, that Rick Owens is heavily inspired by Madeleine Vianney, for example. And nothing necessarily is as new as people think it is in fashion. He was really the one person I saw really constantly challenging that question. If you read between the lines in the messaging between um, his collections, especially at uh, Louis Vuitton, like I really liked his recent work. At Louis Vuitton. Because when it came to fashion, one of the questions that Virgil Abloh was sort of bringing forth was why is it that certain people are bashed or accused for copying more so than others? And what is the reason for that? Because especially um, going to CSM and studying fashion journalism and speaking to different lecturers, they, obviously I have a bigger understanding now of fashion, but there are collections that I thought going to school were so original. And then I've talked to some of my lecturers and they're like, Io, I'm gonna send you this book, read this book, look at the images, and tell me if there's any difference between what you've just seen with this design from 
the 1890s and what this thing that you think is original is. And it's crazy because the more I learn about fashion history, the more I see people just copies everywhere. And it's fine. I mean, if you, it's going back to the Duchamp thing, it's if you can recontextualize something in a different era and it means something different, even though it's the same piece of work, then I think that about it is what makes it new. Um, and yeah, I just, I just hope that Virgil Abloh will be remembered for all the people he touched, the influence he had, all the people he inspired. He definitely inspired me. I don't think I would be here at all if it wasn't for Virgil Abloh because there were so many times I wanted to quit fashion. So many times when I felt I didn't belong. So many times when people made me feel like I didn't belong when I'd work in certain spaces and people would act like I shouldn't even be there. And through it all, what kept me going was because I saw people like Virgil Abloh, a guy that looked like me, a guy of African descent, a guy who was dark skin, a guy who was, you know, in big positions in fashion, um, doing very big things. So I think for me, uh, that's what Virgil Abloh represented to me. And you guys can comment down below uh, what Virgil Abloh meant to you.